everybody doesn't like probate, but most people don't know what probate is. So probate is a court process whereby your assets will be distributed pursuant to the terms of your will. So if you have a will, you're going to get forced into probate, okay? I can't tell you the number of clients that we have come in to see us and they say, well, I have a will. That's going to avoid probate. No, if you have a will, it's going to force you into probate. If you don't have a will, you're going to be forced into probate. So what happens with probate? What is the probate process? Well, you die, your power of attorneys die with you, and then you have a will. And you take the will, original will, and the death certificate, and you have to go to the courthouse. You go to the register of wills, and they're going to open up an estate. And then, you know, you're going to have appointed an executor, a personal representative, who's going to manage the estate, okay? Now, probate usually lasts for well over a year. The time you go through the court systems, inventories, accountings, uh, creditors, there's six months for creditors, and then the final accountings, then the distribution. And when you, when you die, all of your assets are frozen. And then, you know, they have to move in from your accounts into an estate account and countings and, uh, you know, inventories, appraisals. It's just, just a nightmare. So a will is a legal docu document instructing who gets what when you die. That's, wh that's what basically what a will says. It's like one of my clients said, who's going to get my stuff once I'm gone? Okay. Now, it's usually not a problem for the husband and wife. So let's say... I die, we have everything, me and my wife, everything joint. So we have joint checking accounts, joint savings accounts, our house is in, our names are on the car, I have an IRA and some life insurance, okay? I, there's not going to be any probate on my, my process because everything that is joint automatically goes to my <coughs> wife, okay? You were talking about your IRAs and life insurance. Well, my wife is my beneficiary. So those IRAs and life insurance go to my wife. So when I die, there's nothing. So I don't have to go through probate. Now, if I have a car, a second home that is just titled in my name only, then we would have to go through probate to transfer it via my will to my spouse. Is probate costly? Yeah, there's a whole bunch of costs and time and effort. We'll talk about that at the end. Okay. So that's what I'm talking about here. Probate does not control assets held in joint tenancy, husband and wife joint, you know, and assets with a beneficiary designation, IRAs, 401ks, CDs sometimes have beneficiaries, all those type of things. Okay? So one of the problems that we see is when I call this I, I love you will. So if I die, I leave everything to my spouse. If my spouse dies, she leaves everything to me. And if we both die, then it goes to our children. That's very typical. And I call that the I love you will. Okay. However, let's say I'm still alive. And my wife is in the nursing home. And she's on Medicaid. And I have a house and savings. And then all of a sudden, I die. And I have a will. And who am I leaving it to? My spouse. So everything that I own then goes to my spouse. That means she has lots of assets. As we'll find out for Medicaid, as a single person, you can only get Medicaid if your assets are below $2,500. So all of a sudden, she has check-in, savings, and a house. So she's kicked off of Medicaid. And then if you don't do anything, all that money is going to be spent down below $2,500. Then she'd get back on Medicaid again. And what's going to happen to your legacy? Does it go to your children? Does it go to your grandchildren if you don't like your children? Okay, no, it's all gone to the nursing home. So, what we want to do is, I love you, but. Okay, it doesn't mean that you don't love your spouse any less, but. The big question is the but. So what we do is, with a will, it says, okay, I'm going to leave everything to my spouse, but she's only going to get my spousal share. 
okay, which is roughly 40-50% in most states. So let's say I have $100,000, okay? So let's say the spousal share is 40%, so my wife is going to get 40%. The other 60%, we're going to keep in a trust for her through the will. It's called a testamentary trust. So she, the testamentary trust keeps 60000 bucks. The nursing home can only get its greedy paws on the 40000 It can't get on the 60000 So that 60000 could be used for expenses for my wife. Because as we'll find out, the nursing home takes all of her income apart from 78 bucks. So what can you get for 78 bucks? Nothing. But the probate is a court process to create lots of money for attorneys. That's why we like probate. Your will is a ticket to probate. This was an AARP study. The next generation will lose over a billion dollars by going through the probate process. So, do we want to avoid probate? The idea is yeah. Just like guardianship, you want to avoid it. Reasons to avoid probate. Well, time average is well over 12 months. You were talking about costs, you know, costs, you know, court costs of just an estate with a $350,000 home plus other assets of 250 is a $600,000 estate. Attorney's fees could be about 24,000 bucks. But this little leprechaun attorney is not going to be very happy because he's not going to lose all that gold. So we want to avoid guardianship. We want to avoid probate. So how do we do that? We do it by trusts. Okay? Um, so there's different types of trusts. There's many types of trusts. But with my, my clientele, we're using three to four. We're usually using three, uh, three types of trusts. One's a probate avoidance trust, one's a nursing home trust, one's a supplemental needs trust. So a, a supplemental needs trust is sometimes if we have um, your know, children um, with special needs, or sometimes we call it a special needs trust. Because a lot of like say grandparents want to give their, you know, their, their, their kids say 50 grand. But if you give a, you know, a special needs child once they're over 18, 50,000 bucks, they would lose their government benefits because they're over $2,000. So then they have to spend that $50,000 and then reapply. So we can set up a special needs trust that we can put the $50,000 in there. It doesn't affect their benefits, but if they need additional help, then the, 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 the trust can pay for it, okay? But these are the two big trusts that we use. One is a probate avoidance trust, the other one's a nursing home protector trust that I'll talk about later, okay? So we're going to talk about the probate avoidance trust. So what is a probate avoidance trust? Commonly known as a revocable trust or a living trust, okay? So basically this trust is a will substitute. That's the easiest way to think about it. So one is you have a will and it's going to force you through probate. The other one is that you have a trust and that's going to avoid probate. Why? How can that happen? Well, if you think about the trust as a business, so you have a CEO of a business. Once again, you're the CEO of the trust. You're the owner of the trust. You're the grantor of the trust. You set up the rules and regulations. So if I die, it goes to my wife. If my wife dies, it goes to the kids. Okay? If something happens to my kids, it could go to the grandchildren. Okay, but there's different permutations that you can have. Sometimes we don't want to see any hands. Sometimes we, we don't like our in-laws, our daughter-in-law or son-in-law. Okay, people have come in and said, you know, if something happens, I don't want that money going to that person. I want it to go to my grandchildren if, I die, you know, if they die. So what we can do is within the trust, keep the money in the trust for our daughter or our son and they have access to it. However, if they died, that money would not go to the son-in-law or daughter-in-law. It would go down to the children. Sometimes we have clients who are coming in, they have children with problems with drugs and alcohol. And what happens? Well, if I was to give that my son 50,000 or 100,000, how long would that last? Be gone, they might be gone. So sometimes we can set up what we call a spendthrift trust that we're just going to you know, give them 50 bucks a week.
for the rest of their life until it runs out. Or if it runs out, we didn't spend it all, it can go to the children. Or sometimes your children have problems with bankruptcy, foreclosures, so we want to try and protect that. So there's different things that we can do in the living trust, okay? But for most people it is, it's just getting that money out to the children without going through probate, without going through all that expense, time, and hassle. And that's the idea of this. Now, there's no tax forms because everything flows through your social security, so you're not really doing anything. And once again, if I set up this trust, I'm the owner, and I'm also the manager of the trust. I'm the trustee, okay? So I manage the trust just like a business, and I'm also the beneficiary while I'm still alive. I can put money in, take money out, change it, alter it, amend it, revoke it, do whatever I want to do. Now, if I die, then once again, like the power of attorneys, we have alternate or successor trustees. Could be my wife, could be my kids, could be anybody I, I choose, okay? And then the beneficiaries, boom, straight away, without going throughout this probate, without spending 25, 30,000 bucks on probate attorney's fees and all of this type of stuff. Okay, now, a lot of clients come in and say, hey, I've got this revocable trust, a living trust. Great, so what, but it's going to protect my assets from the nursing home. It does not, let me emphasize, a revocable living trust does not protect your assets from the nursing home. All it does is avoids probate. Because with the living trust, I'm the owner, I'm the trustee, and I'm the beneficiary. That means I can reach into this trust and get at the assets, okay? If I can reach in there and get those assets, what can the nursing home do? It can also reach in and grab those assets. So this living trust does not protect your assets. That's why we need an irrevocable trust that we'll talk about soon.